You guys wanna see if Y can fly? Let's see. Ha, much better, nice. Hey friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Gen Sense. As you can see, I'm having fun destroying my bottle of Y. Or am I? That's right, friends, you've been fooled by Hollywood. That was a stunt bottle. Got ya. Today we're talking about 10 of my go-to fragrances, my everyday fragrances. Uh, days when my brain is just not quite firing on all cylinders. Days quite like today, where I might <laughs> just wanna grab something, spray it and go and not think about it. That's what we're talking about today. So 10 of my go-to everyday wear fragrances from the past and the current. All of these are linked in the description below. Feel free to check them out down there. We'll start things off with this one. The very safe, not at all injured Y Live from Yves Saint Laurent. And if it didn't have a stunt bottle, it would be Y Dead. <laughs> so, Y Live is uh, overlooked a lot of times when it comes to the Y line. A bunch of people will gravitate toward only Y Eau de Parfum or Y Le Parfum if they want something that smells similar to the Eau de Parfum but is a little bit more uh, classy, a little bit more grown up. I think Y Live just absolutely shines in day-to-day -day use. This stuff is a compliment monster. It's a little bit like you take the Y DNA and mix it with parts of Invictus. And I know for some people out there who are more niche-centered, who are maybe more snobbish toward uh, designer fragrances, that sounds like being stuck in the seventh level of hell or something like that. You know, they say, oh no, why mixed with Invictus? <laughs> But um, just for day-to-day -day use, it's amazing. People love it. It's got good performance. It's very likable. And I'm not even really a big Invictus fan, but the way that it works here, I, I dig. I can't lie. So Y Live, this one gets a lot of use from me and uh, has always done me right. It's treated me well. Now this is one that I used to wear a bunch and I still do wear from time to time. It's Versace Pour Ohm. This one, I think spring, summer, fall is just just about perfect. It's super easy to wear, very simple, but likable, and it's not too expensive from discounters. This was my office fragrance of choice for a while there because this is the type of scent that you can just load yourself down with and nobody's gonna complain. Mmm, mmm. All those molecules attaching to the inside of my lungs, that's gotta be good for me. It's a little similar to Missoni Wave or uh, Chanel Olorome Sport, but it's, I would say, fresher than those two, not that those are not fresh fragrances, they just have a little more oomph to them, a little more heaviness to them. This one is light, breezy, easy going. I just think that um, it's, it's one of those ones that nobody on this earth is gonna dislike, and that's why it's so easy to use. A lot of these are on the fresher side because when I'm thinking about something that I just wanna grab, spray, and go, uh, it's something I don't wanna think about at all, and fresher fragrances are typically that. I think uh, heavier fragrances sometimes are a little bit more difficult to, uh, to wear just in general. Again, just in generalities. After that, Dior Ohm Sport. This stuff, just magic, man. You can wear that everywhere. It's got a, a great classiness to it. The woodiness here, very modern, the way that it comes across. It's like Dior Ohm 2020. If you freshened it up a little bit, cleaned off a little bit of the rough edges that that one could have for some people because of the ramped up woodiness in that one. Now this still has that woodiness, but it's just freshened up, livened up, brightened up. And it is not just a sport fragrance. So this is not only a gym fragrance or an outdoors in the summer fragrance, okay? This is another one that would be perfect in the office, in more formal situations, especially when it's going to be warmer outside. And as with most Dior own fragrances, very classy as well. So this, great, great, great. Then we go to Guilty Black from Gucci. Now, I know, I know. This has been a, a whipping fragrance ever since it came out. People hating on the gooch and uh, I'm not on board, okay? I will not join in on your crusade of hate. I refuse, I refuse, I will not allow it. This is very green, as you might expect looking at the bottle, even though it is named Gucci Guilty Black and not Gucci Guilty Green. Really, the name doesn't match that well, but I don't care, it smells good. A Little bit soapy, lightly sweet, as I said, very green, fresh, and uh, it is a best-selling fragrance in the US, so this is not some underground scent. To be fair, 
Most everything that I'm gonna talk about here today is pretty well known. And I think that is just because the fragrances that I'm talking about were basically made to be this type of scent. These weren't fragrances made to be some crazy artistic expression, right? Like <laughs> Versace Pour Homme, you know, when they were concocting this one, they weren't sitting there like, uh, we need to channel the catacombs of Paris, the darkness, the despair. I need to smell that in fragrance form. I need to feel my soul chipped away and leaving my body. Nah, they were like, how about something fresh that smells good? That's what I want. I don't know why they turned very Southern, uh, but yeah. Guilty Black gets so overlooked, but it doesn't deserve it because this is perfect if you're looking for something green, clean, and compliment pulling. Really, really nice. Uh, let's see, I'm looking down here. We need one next to this one. Lunarosa Carbon. Yes, it's Dior Sauvage-esque. Yes, Prada copied Dior's homework and changed a couple answers, but it works. It is Sauvage with a Prada twist. A little bit smoother, less aggressive with the metallic and broxen feel that Sauvage has. Slightly soapy with a nice, lightly sweetened tinge, not overdone, and uh, has good performance to boot. Lasts a long time, projects very well, and just like Dior Sauvage, it is the type of scent that just about everybody's gonna love. So if you ever smelled Sauvage and you thought to yourself, ha, huh, I can see why people like this, it's really appealing, but it's just too loud, too metallic, too aggressive, then maybe this one would be perfect for you. And I find it, for my own personal taste, just a little more versatile than Dior Sauvage for those reasons. All right, this next one is basically just a beginner's vetiver. It's easy mode vetiver, uh, but because it is easy mode vetiver, that makes it easy to wear. So it's this one, Low DC Pour Homme vetiver. They really went out on a limb when they were naming this one, didn't they? So the note breakdown here is really simple. Basically ginger, vetiver, sage, and aquatic notes. And as I said, it's, it's pretty simple. This is easy mode. It's not a vetiver fragrance that has, uh, you know, a dark edge to it. There's no smoky aspect. It's not really like a, a dry, intense vetiver. It's bright, it's airy, fresh, clean. The water has stripped away any potential earthy aspect, dirty aspect of the fragrance. It's, it's a sparkling vetiver. It has a nice little touch of fresh spice from the ginger, a liveliness from that ginger. Uh, it's something that everybody's going to enjoy. And if you are afraid of vetiver, something like this could help ease you in because at the end of the day, it's it's more so just a, a very uplifting woody scent, aquatic woody. I say that because a lot of people with vetiver fragrances, they can be very apprehensive about trying them out because vetiver can come across a whole bunch of different ways, a whole bunch of different ways. And some of those ways are a bit much for some people, but this, this is like I said, it's easy mode. After that, Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Beau. Now when this first launched, I was middling, middling on it. I, I didn't really get it at first. And then the more that I wore this, the more I liked it, and the more <laughs> compliments and positive attention I got from other people asking me, what are you wearing? What is that? It smells really nice. And so as time went on, uh, Le Beau became one of my kind of go-to fragrances. And then Le Beau Le Parfum, and now <laughs> the new one, Paradise Garden, I really enjoy. But back to this, Le Beau is just a great, great fragrance because it gives you something quite different from most everything else out there that isn't a Le Beau. Like this is not comparable to any of this. The coconut in here is done fantastically a little different feel, you know, it gives you that tropical sweetness, a little bit creamy, but it doesn't lean feminine. And that is what I love about this because so many fragrances with coconut or solar notes or anything kind of in that vein ends up smelling like sunscreen or it ends up smelling very feminine. This does not. The only bummer about Le Beau and Le Beau Le Parfum is they are not that easy to find in the US. Um, discounters and uh, sometimes you just can't really find them much at all and that's kind of a pain but this is great after that Terre d'Hermes Eau Givre the fragrance that won fragrance of the year over my fragrance that's right Terra Nova was up for uh, fragrance of the year for the fragrance foundation awards and uh, it lost to Eau Givre
but honestly, this stuff is fantastic, so I, I can't be mad. This is really good. Oh, by the way, yeah, all my fragrances, every fragrance outlet, every Perfumania in the country, in the US. The new ones, West Loop and Edgewater, and then South Slope is a relaunch of Blue Ridge, just with a new name. You can also find them online, linked in the description. Gent Sense is the code. Like I said, this stuff, amazing. The opening is fantastic. It has citron off the top that is this great, natural kind of citrus with a little rindiness to it, but not too much. So you have a, a bit of a rindiness, a little tartness, but then the sweetness that's in there, it helps offset that tartness so it doesn't become just all sour. And that gives it a very alive feeling when you spray this one on. Just absolutely stunning. Great, 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 great opening. As it dries down, it stays very fresh, very modern, uh, woodsy in there that ties it back a bit with the original Terre d'Hermes, but with none of the earthiness, none of the flintiness from the OG. Just a great flanker, extremely well done, and it deserved fragrance of the year. Aqua de Jo is next, Profundo. Not much of a surprise. Always been an Aqua de Jo guy, and Profundo is uh, my current favorite, so it gets a lot of use. Uh, you know, make no excuses, it is what it is. I've been wearing Aqua de Jo since uh, I was a teenager, you know. I'm not gonna break the habit now. I'm a lifer at this point. Really good modern take on the original DNA. It's more masculine leaning than the original. Uh, doesn't have those floral overtones that the original Aqua de Jo had or has. Uh, has a nice minerality, this one. A little green in there. Very aquatic, very clean, and uh, yeah, it's, it's Aqua de Jo. You can wear Aqua de Jo literally anywhere. And last but not least, Platinum Egoist from Chanel. So this guy right here, easily gonna be the classiest of the bunch. Yeah, smells awesome. So aromatic, this one, uh, very masculine, classy. Probably won't appeal as much to younger guys. Younger guys most likely going to want something a little sweeter something that's a little bit more reach out and grab your attention. You know, like Y Live, Luna Rosa Carbon, LeBeau, uh, something like that. But this one, this is perfecto for an office scent, work scent, classy business scent, formal scent, anything like that. But it works very well casually as well. It kind of elevates whatever you have on. It just makes you smell like a million bucks. So that one, gonna wrap it up. Uh, but by no means is that the worst of the bunch. So there we go. These are some of my go-to fragrances that I do not have to think about whatsoever. And these have gotten some heavy use over the years. This is actually my, uh, I think, third bottle of this one, uh, second bottle of this one, second bottle of this one, and so on and so forth. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.